Hi, good day. So for today, we are going to talk about the Spearman's Raw Correlation. Now, Spearman's Raw Correlation is an another way on how we can determine the correlation or the relationship between two different variables or two different sets of data. Now, unlike the Pearson's R, which assumes normally distributed data, Spearman's Raw Correlation can only be used if our data is not normally distributed. Hence, Spearman's Raw Correlation is under the non-parametric test. Also, because in Spearman's Raw Correlation, we assume that our data is not normally distributed, then the most appropriate level of measurement that we should use here is under the ordinal scale, not interval or ratio scale. To give you an example, let's have here the age and sleep duration correlation. Let's correlate the age and sleep duration. Is it true that as age increases, sleep duration decreases? So for us to be able to verify this, we have here five subjects labeled A, B, C, D, and E. We have here the five subjects. We obtained their ages and their duration of sleep. Okay, so... Uh, we have here 25, 18, 32, 28, and 62, which represent the ages, okay? And these ages represent the X variable in our data. On the other hand, our duration of sleep here are 6 hours, 7 hours, 5 hours, 7 hours, 5 hours. And these durations of sleep represent our Y variable, Okay. And we also obtained, we also have here the row for total and we have here 165 for ages and 30 hours for the durations of sleep. Now take note that our subjects here are uh, examples again of dependent sample because um, the two data here, uh, the ages and the duration of sleep came from the same sets of, uh, I mean same set of sample or same set of person so this 25 and 25 uh, as age and six hours as duration of sleep here came from the same subject subject a 18 and 7 came from subject b uh, subject b and so on and so forth so we only have here one set of subject their subjects therefore these are actually examples of dependent samples. Now, as we have noticed here in the age in the age column, we have here 25, 18, 32, 28, and 62. The ages 25, 18, 32, and 28 are actually close to each other. However, we have here an outlier of 62, which makes our data not normally distributed now. Okay? Because of this 62, medyo lumayo tayo sa normal distribution curve. Because of this 62, nahatak yung ating mean and median and mode. And because of that, uh, our data now is not normally distributed. Okay? And because our data here is not normally dis distributed anymore, then we cannot anymore use this interval ratio or interval or ratio scale. By the way, these ages and duration of sleep are actually in ratio scale originally. However, because um, our data here is not normally distributed anymore, then this is actually not the appropriate... Uh, value or the appropriate data that we uh, that we should use here to find the correlation between the age and sleep. So what uh, what are we going to do here? We are going to get the ranks in age, okay, and we are going to also to get the ranks in duration of sleep. So we are going to rank the age and sleep. Now in ranking in ranking these values, the smallest number or the smallest value will get the smallest rank and the highest value will get the highest rank. So, let's uh, rank the age. So, this uh, the smallest value in age here is 18. And therefore, this is actually our rank 1. Okay? So, this is now our X and this is our Y. And this is the rank for X, the A, uh, rank for age. So, this is our uh, 1. Okay? Next, um, we have here 25. Okay? And that will be our rank 2. Okay? Uh, we have here 28 rank 3, 32 rank 4, and 62 rank 5. We are also going to do that, uh, to do that process in uh, duration of sleep in our Y column. So we have here the rank for Y. So for the first uh, rank, we have here 5 hours. That is actually the smallest value in uh, Y column. However, we have here two fives, two 5 hours, right? Now, these two 5Rs should share the ranks 1 and 2. 
the first and second rank. However, none of them is actually greater than the other. So what are we going to do here? For those ranks that are actually in tie, what we are going to do here is to add the ranks that they actually share, the ranks that they actually share, and divide the sum, okay? Divide the sum into the number of data that actually shares that uh, that actually share that rank. So let's say for example, okay, let's say for example, we have here two fives and these two fives shares uh two fives share rank 1 and 2. Okay, so we are going to add that 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and then divide it by the number of data that actually shares the uh, that actually shared the rank 1 and 2. So the number of data that actually shared the rank 1 and 2 is actually 2. We have here 2 5 hours. Diba? Meron tayo ditong dalawang 5 hours. So, what is 3 divided by 2? That's 1.5. That's why we have here rank 1.5 and 1.5. Now, because we already used up the rank 2 or the second rank, the next rank now or the next value now will be ranked 3rd. Okay, kasi nagamit na natin yung second. Okay, so this is rank 1.5, rank 1.5, and the next uh, value after 5 hours is of course 6 hours. So this will be now, this will be now our rank 3 or the third rank. Okay, the third in rank. So uh, for this one, nagumpisan na tayo sa 3 because we already used up the, sec uh, the second rank. And what comes after the second rank? Of course, the third rank, the third in rank. Okay, so that's why we have here 3. Okay. Now, what if, for example, we have three values that share the same rank? Let's say, for example, we have three values that share the same rank, and the ranks that they actually share are ranks 4, 5, and 6. Okay. What we are going to do here is, again, add all the ranks that they actually share. We have 4, 5, and 6 is equal to 15, and then divide it by the number of the data that actually share the same rank. So, in, this, uh, in my example, uh, we have three data that actually share the same rank so that's divided by 3 15 divided by 3 is 5 that's why um those data that we have will be ranked fifth okay but for this one okay each of these value okay, will rank 1.5 and 1.5 and then the next value will rank third because we already used up the second um the second rank okay so 1.5 1.5 and then third then right after the third rank we have fourth rank okay and the fourth in rank here is seven hours okay however we have here two seven hours and so these two seven hours will share uh, will share the same rank ranks four and five so what we are going to do here is the same process that we as what we did earlier so for a while so for this one for this one these two seven hours here will share the rank four and five so we are going to add four and five four plus five is equal to nine and then divide it by the number of data that actually share that rank so in this case we have here two seven hours so we are going to divide it by two so nine divided by two is 4.5 that's why uh seven hours these two seven hours here will rank 4.5 and 4.5 and just like in age and duration of sleep we have here the total row okay and our total row here for x is 15 and for the y we also have here 15 now right after we rank these values Okay, these values we are going to get their difference okay, the difference between the x and y so we have here d stands for the difference and we have here d square stands for the square of the difference okay, so 2 minus 3 again d, d is uh, the difference between the x and y value x and y value so we have here 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1 1 minus 4.5 is negative 3.5 4 minus 1.5 is 2.5 and so on and so forth and then we are going to square we are going to square these values into this column so 1 square is 1 negative 3.5 square is 12.25 2.5 square is 6.25 negative 1.5 square is 2.25 and 3.5 square is 12.25 and then we are going to get their total its total and that is 34 okay now, right after we complete, uh, we completed this table. Let's now proceed to the formula for the Spearman's row. Now, this is now the formula for the Spearman's row. And as we have noticed here, we have here this symbol. This symbol is actually read as row. 
rho is equal to 1 minus 6 multiplied to the summation of d square over n, n cubed minus n. Where n stands for the number of sample in our case because we have here 5 subjects, 5 dependent samples, then our n here is 5. Okay? Next, this jagged, this apparently uh, uh, letter E here, this one, the summation uh, symbol means a sum or total. Okay, so this is actually sum or total. And our D square here is the square difference. So this is actually our square difference. And summation of D square here is the total of the square difference or the summation of uh, square difference. So let's proceed to the computation. So rho is equal to 1 minus 6 multiplied to summation of squared difference over n cubed minus n. By substitution, okay, we know that our n is 5. So rho is equal to 1 minus 6 times 34. Where did we get this 34? Again, the summation of d square, this is actually the total. The d square, is, uh, the d square are these values and their summation is 34. So that's why we have here 34. Okay, And 5 cubed minus 5. So by simply uh, by simplifying further this equation, then we can have here rho is equal to 1 minus 204, that's 6 times 34, over 125, that is actually the cube of 5, minus 5. Okay? And by simplifying further this equation, then we can have here rho is equal to 1 minus 1.7, uh, 1.70. And then rho is equal to negative 0 0.70. Now, how are we going to form a conclusion? to form a conclusion using uh, this row value here. So again, we have here the concepts needed for us to be able to form a conclusion. For the first one, for the sign of R, if our R is positive, then it shows direct relationship. Okay, it shows direct relationship. That is, when one increases, the other one also increases. And when one decreases, the other one also decreases. Okay. And if R is negative, it shows inverse relationship. That is, when one increases, the other one decreases and vice versa. Okay. For the values of rho, if our rho here is from 0 0.00 to 0 0.20, then that means no correlation. 0 0.21 to 0 0.4, low correlation. 0 0.41 to 0 0.70, moderate correlation. 0 0.71 to 0 0.9, high correlation. 0 0.91 to 0 0.99, very high correlation. And a rho of 1 means perfect correlation and just like in Pearson's R the value of rho can only range from negative 1 to positive 1 now with these guides or with these concepts now what is our conclusion here how can we now form conclusion here our conclusion here is therefore age which is actually the X and duration of sleep which is actually our Y show inverse because it is negative Okay, negative, inverse, and moderate correlation because 0 0.70 is actually under the range of 0 0.41 to 0 0.70. So therefore, moderate correlation. That is how we can use the Spearman's row correlation in determining the correlation between two different variables that are not normally distributed. Okay, so thank you for listening and good day.